Hello and welcome to Nintendo Voice, your voice for everything Nintendo. This is episode 137 being recorded on the 2nd of May 2018. My name's Lewis Pugh and joining me to talk all things Nintendo, we have Harrison Mulfeld. Glad to be back here again. And Colin Crompton. Hello, yes, I'm in like new surroundings. I'm in the same room, but the camera's pointing yeah. out. Yeah, I was like, I was getting to a point, I'm like, wow, everybody's moving, it seems like these days right now. For <laughs> like we've, I'm like, and I look at it like, did you move? No, just, uh, you just, said. Just just move the desk around. That's all I've done. <laughs> just move my desk. Yep, yep. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. I've not moved yet. I'm in the process of doing so. So next episode. Oh. Different, different physical mm-hmm. space. Get excited for that, folks. I- yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to maybe switch up for everybody here who's watching the video feed. I may need to switch up my my view. It seems like whether because knowing that both of you on here, you have at least gaming stuff that has like the walls and stuff. I mean, mine's to directly to my right or in another room in the, in the next room to me. I know people can definitely get tired of staring at my last name that my parents gave of these different letterings out there, and of course the sports teams I like. So I know everybody's gonna get a little upset. I'm not upset, but just like tired of it. <laughs> maybe I'll hang. Maybe I'll hang some. Maybe I'll hang some Nintendo stuff on there. That would oh, be amazing. Go. Cool. So that's that. Yeah. yeah. Today we d- we have a slightly different structure than usual. Mm. We don't know what we've been playing. We don't have no super topics for you. We've got triple billing of news. Ooh. News, news, and more news. All the exciting. I hope stuff. you like news, folks. Because guess what? There's a lot of it. News, news and number. We got numbers. <gasps> Stats. Oh. Okay. Ooh, we exciting things at once. Do we have any spreadsheets we can go over? Um, I don't know. We, we have the spreadsheet that we have for uh, the Nintendo Voice spreadsheet, which Ooh. basically keeps track of making sure we don't reuse the same intro and outros. Mm. That'd be cool. Well, maybe maybe we could get a spreadsheet together. You look forward to that. That's like to look forward to. That's what, for sure. What, what would your what, spreadsheet be? What would your spreadsheet be exactly, of Lewis? Of like, uh, Lewis is gonna make a podcast about spreadsheets. Apparently, I don't know where he's going with this. I don't know. It needs to have a, a nice fancy pivot table on there. That's that's my only requirement. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, there's been a lot happening in the world in Nintendo recently, and so we're gonna focus our uh, discussion this week all around those things. And we're leading with a topic close to my heart, of course. Oh. Not by choice, but it just happens to be. Uh, our first topic of the day is around Splatoon 2, believe it or not. And Splatfests. Uh, and we do have <laughs> a, a slightly different type of Splatfest coming up. Because there's a few of them, essentially. There's going to be three of them. It's a sponsored one, too. It is another sponsored one. I think this is the third, at least, uh, Western-sponsored one. Yeah, the first one was with... Transformers, I think, in Spl- Splatoon one, it was like Decepticons versus Autobots, which of course the Decepticons did win that one. So I was part of that. I was part of that group. The other and one, there, I was, forget- there was also a SpongeBob one. E- what was it like, Patrick and SpongeBob? I think it was Patrick and SpongeBob going head to head, the ultimate battle of all battles. Um, I'm not sure who won that one. Probably Patrick, because it's the internet. No, when in doubt, if you don't know who won, think of the internet. What would the internet choose? <laughs> And I've, I've noticed throughout, we'll see if this theme continues. This is like a a very slight like connection. I feel to Splatoon, like Transformers. All right, you've got Squid, which turn into kids. They transform. Oh, oh. that's that's I, that's that's stretching it. That is stretching. They remember they used to be ra- they they used to be technically rabbits in the design phase, though. Yeah, that's true. That is there was true. no transforming then. They added the transformation just so they can get such sponsorship deals. Um, <laughs> that, that led us. To you, SpongeBob, which of course takes place under the sea, sea water squids. There we go. That kind of works, right? No pineapples, though. There are no pineapples. Or, or squid. Moment. Uh, moment. But this time, it's all about TMNT, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, as, Lewis. What's as the they've been known for some period of time over here. I'm sure it's not still the case. Mm-hmm. Um, nope. Oh yeah, you guys had the unfortunate thing of uh, the TMNT being named uh, Teenage Mutant uh, Hero, Hero Turtles. 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 TMHT, um, as I don't think it was ever referred to. Nope. They, uh, hated, yeah. they really, hate, you guys hated ninjas. Wow, I can't believe that. It was yeah, our, was... I believe it was our classification board. Thought yeah, ninjas, too violent ninjas. Ninjas are too kids. violent. <laughs> Nunchucks are for kids. Nope. Which, to be fair, <laughs> probably good advisory there. Um, but yeah, fine, apparently. So yeah, weird. 
That's true. So yeah, the reason why this one's different, not just because it's another sponsored one, is because it's been split up into three different spat fests. Uh, and so ultimately we're deciding between the four turtles. Uh, but because Splatfests are only one thing versus the other thing, um, mm. so May fourth we got um, who do we have? We have Raphael versus Leonardo, and then on May eleventh we got Michelangelo versus Donatello, okay. and then the conclusion happens May eighteenth, where the two winners are the two options you can choose from. And that will decide things. So we must make our case here for the best turtle. Of course, everybody who says it's Ra it's not Raph or Michelangelo, you're wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say Donatello, but I mean, I have right. people. I have people who like Donatello a lot, but you know, it's the, this is where the allegiances have to be. Where do you lie, everybody? Because <laughs> this, that will determine friendships. Can we just can we just say that Leonardo is the worst? Can we all agree that Leonardo is the worst of them? Worse as a leader, or worse than the fact that he's just, um... It's just bland, compared to the others. Mm, depends on which turtle, though, when you actually... I mean, it's true. I mean, which version on here, because uh, this one is actually co-assigning with the new Nickelodeon show, I think, which oh, okay. has a very is, interesting... Yes. It has a very interesting art style, I mean, and I always feel like that a lot of people, when they get um, upset about a new iteration of the turtles coming in, they like, oh, this is just a an affront to the legacy, whatever. I mean, I remember when that happened when the 2003 series happened. Mm -hmm. That turned out to be really good. And then that happened when the new Nickelodeon CGI series, like computer animated series came along. Yep. That turned out pretty well. And I know that this animated style made a bit of a jarring and how the character designs are very, because Raph is apparently like the Hulk now, I think. So based on size. <laughs> But, um, okay, that yeah. sounds like something like boom. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's the thing. I think I got the comparison, but to me, it just it's kind of a cycle. You know, people are going to complain about this and they're going to accept it, and it's going to be fine going mm -hmm. forward. Because when you look back at the original Ninja Turtle show, it has not aged that well. Oh, yeah, true. My, my favorite thing about turtles, whenever the new iteration of turtles, like, people always go, Oh, they're ugly. Like, yeah, they're turtles. Following the design doc, exactly. Um, I, I, I do want to pull from the live chat. Oh, it, it's a good early live chat. Um, usually takes a little while to build up. Um, but anyway, Mike the poet says uh, Ninja Turtles mutated in ooze. Splatoon shoots ink connection. Oh, so we're saying that TGRI is responsible for the post-apocalyptic world of Splatoon. I'm not sure it's. As, That's my theory. That's my theory. As not directly no. assumed, but maybe you never know. Mm. Yeah. It could be, a, it could be a, um, a very strong through line for all these sponsored deals, really. We might have our our equivalent of um, Avengers coming up some point in the future, where all these properties make you know proper story purpose. <laughs> Wait, are you suggest are you suggesting an Infinity War style crossover between the Turtles and Splatoon? Or oh yeah, well, yeah, but not just that. Like SpongeBob will be there as well as the Transformers will be helping out, and um, it'll be a good time for all. Whole family. Are you gonna, I, I don't know. Let's just throw more obscure stuff from. I mean, if we're going to talk about like '90s obscure things that were based around toys, uh, here, here's here's Street Sharks. Let's let's get that in there. Or Biker Mice from Biker Mars. Mice Why not? Mars. I was yeah. Say that. Or, I or you know, Street Sharks has the obvious theme. Um, did you know that um Vin Diesel was that one of his earlier things he did was actually video like a, the New York Toy Fair promoting Street Sharks. Look up the video up. It is just hilariously sad, even though I knowing what he thinks. I did not know that. Oh, there's vi there's video of him, and I think he has hair. That that that's the that's a weird thing too. So and I also have to say, uh, Mike on the chat is very excited that Street Sharks has been mentioned. Um. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad I can get you your Street Sharks uh, fix in for you, man. I've never even heard of Street Sharks. Oh, it's it's it, look it up, man. It's 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 a it's a joy to look at. It's a joy to just think about. You're like, this is what the night is. This is what the night. This is what the nineties majority put out. Yeah. Let me write it down. Let me look it up after the show. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I assume this Splatfest is, although we're having like three sets with like, I guess, three mini, well, two mini winners and one ultimate winner. Mm -hmm. I assume mm -hmm. in terms of like prizes, that's just going to be dished at the, the last of these. It would be cool if like each one is treated like its own, which it could be. And so mm -hmm. in terms of like being on the winning team and then getting... Uh, super sea snails for him. Um, and I believe, like for the super sea snails, that you know, the what, what you get for each snails? Slash, that, shells. They're what? Uh, say what? Shells. Um, 
Yeah. Shells, whatever. <laughs> but um, it's like uh, you have like a week after to get them in most Splatfests, but this one it's like two days, I think. Oh, wow. So, because it's like each one's so close to each other, so mm -hmm. um, like, well, two days to actually claim them. Um, but no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm. This is the type of thing I really like to kind of just energize, like Splatoon, a little bit more to get everything out there because I think that's one thing that kind of keeps it alive, aside from the huge community that has been growing, you know, ever since the series first became onto the scene. So, um, I don't know. I uh, and I, I, it just makes me kind of convinced that Nintendo says that they're supporting like. Um, things like of uh, like a year's worth after it's released after a year from its release more content for Splatoon as far as gameplay wise and then Splatfest go a year after that I have a feeling that I just the way that this kind of keeps rolling right now that they're going to keep supporting it past the Octo expansion I, I just that's just a hunch for me I mean, possibly I mean it kind of, I guess it kind of depends on if the player base is still there um, yeah I'll be fine with that I, don't know, I think I think it will also go hand in hand with them starting to charge for their online service. True. This is true. I think, uh, yeah, I they need something for that to actually kind of bring them a little forward. But um, I yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah, and also if we're going by, not that I need any excuse to bring up arms in particular, uh, but they 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 clearly say when they announce arms that there'll be a year worth of support, right? And they they they've gone beyond that. Um, and like they are adding bits to it, they, they're not they're not adding any new characters, but they are still adding stuff to the game. They're still supporting it, um, not just through balance uh, patches and so on, um, but by like that. That's what I, I'd kind of expect. But they're still adding like you know pictures into the gallery and like the mini modes, and they're like changing up how party um, crashes work and such. Uh, and so I reckon we'll just see that on a bigger scale for Splatoon. So they'll probably ramp down, uh, but we'll still see like little bits which would keep interest and I, I imagine that would still include things like you know the gear and weapons and such um because um from all their messaging like oh they've said oh instead of getting like a weapon a week which is how it's been for a long time which is crazy um you're getting there'll be four weapons a month and i like and that's how it's going to be from here on out is the messaging so i imagine it's going to go for a while or else they would have used this time to go all right it's going to happen till this point or or just you know oh, this you know it, it has ended now or what, whatever they would have choose to do to ramp it down yeah yeah i imagine we'll see a lot more splatoon 2 in the future we can only hope we can only hope all right colin what would you like to see next um like sponsored splatfest oh sponsored splatfest um yeah if you if you, if you got to pick and i'm gonna say it's an it can't be a nintendo and it has to be like them working with some other company it does tell. I think non non game related as well. Non oh, you mean worse? Um, because okay, that's the um. I'm thinking moving record so far. I'm thinking <sighs> Smurfs on one team, minions on the other. <gasps> Smurfs is it minions. That's there it. you go. Oh wow, this yeah. is just this for is the <laughs> just for the bold colours. That's why I went for it. Blue and yellow. Come on, that could okay. work. Um, me. That's okay. I, I know. Okay, I, I'll say a Nintendo centered one. I'm saying like you I, round I, up. I, I didn't get that option. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't even ask. No, no. no. <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is like if they ever did a Nintendo one, how about just for best character? Like they just take like okay, here's the eight Nintendo characters we have, and just okay. have a tournament through that. Oh, I, right. I, like full blown. So like this is like the small scaled version of that then. So, yeah, it could be eight or. I don't know if they did sixteen. If they did sixteen, that that just take way too long. I feel I like, but eight. It's, but if you're still doing like one versus one, like groupings, that's a lot mm -hmm. of like splat fest rounds, as it were, which go on for a day mm -hmm. or two. <laughs> to yeah, get to the mm -hmm. conclusion. Exactly. Um, that would be fun. No. That, that could be like oh, like do it over a whole summer or something. That could be like a real big event if they did. Oh yeah, that that'd be something really to me. I mean, imagine when you have when you get to the point where it's like oh, it's like. Samus versus Link, and God, the alliances for that one just be going to a point where it's like, oh wow, this is just going to become chaos. And that the, the ink colors that would be pretty cool too. So I was gonna say that that's probably like a weird problem they would come across when you get so many like teams. Each variation has to work with each other. Mm -hmm. I, I have a game related one. Okay, we'll take you it. Can, you can have Mother Three versus Half Life Three, and whichever one wins gets made. <laughs> The thing is, one of them's already made, so... Well, it gets localized, then. Localized. 
<laughs> oh man, they would be imagine, to watch. Yeah. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> imagine turning out for that one. That'd be amazing. Oh jeez. Yeah, right, uh, but no sponsored one. I'm gonna go with one. I think I mentioned way in the past. Do Star Wars versus Star Trek. That'd be a good one. Ooh. I. That that's 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 a that's a good one. It's a little bit <laughs> unbalanced because of like. How, well, Star Wars is huge right now. Star Trek has like these weird dips in popularity where it's like the biggest thing ever, and it's like goes really quiet for a long time. Then it's the biggest thing again. So, I feel like Star Wars just walk over it. You'd be surprised. No, I say you'd be surprised as far as community. Like, like it depends. Like, say you put um, Star Trek on the side of, um, you know, Marina, or basically it seems like Nintendo has been always been putting the ones where it's like Marina always loses out because they realize, oh, we don't like Pearl, so we're just gonna go with the one that. You, you, I'm just saying you could put the lesser <laughs> have fans out there. They'll do that. Uh, okay, but I'm just you thinking purely works. like platoon's audience. Yeah, I don't. I don't have hard facts to back me up on this one, but I'm gonna say it skews younger. <gasps> You're I mean, right. just, just with a hunch. Um, I think Star Wars is more hip with the younger audience. How about this though? Um, Lord of the Rings versus Harry Potter. I was gonna say like Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, um, that worked. That 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 no, too. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's Big brands clashing out. Yeah, it, it's all like franchises. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, I could, I could, some like franchise wars. That's what you should call it. Yeah, yeah, it'd be cool. Um, like we haven't had that many of them, so I doubt we'll see that many in the future. But I'm sh- doubt. I very much doubt this will be last. But it is cool that they are changing up the formula, so it's not this like strict, rigid thing. Mm. Which can never be changed. So it might be that we do seem some weird. Like, oh, there actually are. Next time, it's they somehow. Um, do like three teams going at once sort of thing um, and like actually like fundamentally changing how that game plays purely as an event and you do have like three teams going up or something. Um, I'm not sure it's supported like on the back end to do that sort of thing or if it could be, um, but that would be cool to see. I wouldn't be too surprised if they, they start doing things like that, but yeah, be a lot more legwork. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, that's a good idea. I like it. I will be looking forward to the results of these because, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, jump into the numbers. The numbers, the stuff, and the big news, yes. Yeah, the big news. All right, we had um, the... It Was it um, officially 2017 fiscal report? Uh, yes, this is from I could be, yeah, for the fiscal year. Mm-hmm. Uh, going up to March then. Um, so the big news coming out of this is we, or Nintendo, has a change of president. <gasps> which no. we knew was... Would be coming at some point. Yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, I, I was one of the that was a slightly shocked because I felt like I knew this was going to be temporary. But to me, this thrown in, I'm like, oh wow, I figured it'd just go for another year or so. When mm. after the first, I mean, but go on. I mean, we, we, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but we had no notice as such. But yeah, so I can see why you're shocked. I was shocked as well, even though um, when uh, Tsumi Kimishima um, got the role after um, you know Wata passed away. Uh, he, he did express that this was for the short term until a you know full time yeah. um, president is found within the company, uh, but we didn't have any sort of warning between then and now. It was just announced that you know it's you know it's happening. We, I think it's pretty standard for Japanese uh, companies. Like here it is, this is happening. We have you know boom, boom, we're not going to announce anything. It's just boom, here you go. Oh sure, but and it, it might just be strange because like we follow like obviously the topic of Nintendo particularly closely to have yeah. such a big change just. To be sprung like and just like reading it as fact one day. There's no leaks you know, oh, or anything like that, yeah. Yeah. You know what? That changes things. So, our new president, uh, we have Shintaro Furukawa. Mm-hmm. It will take me a few times to get the pronunciation down here. Um, hey, we, we, uh, we, got, we, we got with Kimishima pretty easily on there, but so yeah, it's we, good. We got, yeah. we got lucky with that one. So Furukawa is 46 years old, which makes him quite young in the game. for a president. Yeah. Of the I, I, th- I thought he was, when they announced him for, like, he was the youngest they announced, but then I realized, wait a minute, Satoru Iwata was, like, 42. And then upon further investigation, I realized that the late uh, Hiroshi Yamauchi, when he took over, mm-hmm. he was 22 years old when he took over the company. He, he was a young <laughs> Old Iron Fist, as I like to call him. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playful name there. Um, so, yeah, Furukawa has not been like this public facing 
face of the company, as it were. <laughs> and like, you know, face. public facing face. Because, <laughs> um, you know, obviously there's certain names, certain faces of the company, which we're, we're quite familiar with by now. Yeah. Curry isn't one of those. Uh, and so a lot of people kind of been digging for information, essentially. Um, <laughs> it seems strange, but but it, it's true. Like uh, People have gone, kind of been like, there's not a huge amount of documented information about this guy compared, like, for oh, no. what you would necessarily expect. Yeah. Uh, so what we do have. Uh, so Furukawa joined uh, Nintendo in 1994. Mm -hmm. um, currently is a board member for both Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. Right. Um, and he's this will be, you know, Nintendo's sixth president. Um, we do also have a few little extra tidbits. Um so one of these is a quote from himself um, after the announcement uh, and being asked uh, how he wants to develop Nintendo further. Um, we have, we will develop the company to its fullest. Uh, I will balance Nintendo's traditions, originality, and flexibility. And uh, I grew up playing the Famicom and come, come from that generation. Now, as a member of management with Super Mario's creator Shigeru Miyamoto, I have a lot of respect for him. On the other hand, with this new job, that can't just that can't just be it. So I expect to say what that. Sorry, I'm butchering this one. So I expect to say what needs to be said to run the company. Hmm. Um, so it sounds like he's really wanting to actually initiate. I mean, bigger changes. I mean, we we knew things were getting off the right foot. It seems like at before Iwata's pa passing how he was like with him and his heavily development with the Switch. And then, of course, Kimishima was the one to lead those reins now and yeah. being the, basically a temporary bird. This was someone, I mean, this is someone who grew up as a fan of video games, like growing mm -hmm. up, whatever. And, you know, it's, again, just a fresh new face to come into something like this. And I, I'm, very, I mean, the more and more I read about him right now, I really do feel like he's getting into it. I mean, one thing I've read about him is he wants to get more into, mo he wants to press it's in a more into mobile, not like fully old time, but to... Yeah kind of like like they they want their earnings to be more mobile because of what they barely kind of touch the surface it seems like with fire Emblem echoes which of yeah. course so and mobile's huge in japan yes. so that's, mm -hmm. that's a whole market waiting for them. absolutely yeah i don't think we got the quote here but yeah um on being asked what the like, area he would like to you know like see the move growth in i can't remember exactly how word yeah his answer was you know the mobile division is where he sees move most room for expansion mm -hmm. um which, you know, does make a lot of sense, which I think a lot, scared a lot of people initially. Oh, you know, he's just a mobile first guy. Is he's going to turn Nintendo to just a phone only game company? Um, I mean, but yeah, no, I, it's yeah. surely just, yeah, comparatively, they're not making much money from mobile, which mm. they could be yeah. um, they, they without could impacting be. their core business. I, um, the thing about Fur Furukawa, though, that I really like when the more like I'm reading about just reading up about this guy and one they have up here is a uh, he um he actually name checked a uh, golf story during his entity like one of his favorite games yes. playing out is golf story i thought that was really interesting nice yeah, mm. smart answer that one <laughs> he but, knew um, golf story re resonate and surprise people um but i actually, I actually do want to go back um to that last quote the, you know the quote i butchered in particular mm -hmm. uh, where he talks about um how he gets he will be managing um Shigeru Miyamoto, someone he's got much respect for, and also as Harrison mentioned, um, this is the first Nintendo president who grew up on Nintendo games yes. as a consumer, opposed yeah. to making the things at the very least, or I guess you mm -hmm. depends on your definition of growing up there um, and the wording that I have a lot of respect for him on the other hand, with this new job that can't just be it, so I expect to say what needs to be said to run the company you're fired <laughs> Yeah. Not that far, but I do feel it is. It almost, you know, it's like, although I, you know, I have grown up with these games, I do respect him a lot. Yeah. He's not going to have full reign, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's yeah, not just a matter true. of you know, go off and make the things you want. I, I feel there's like some, uh, there is actual messaging there saying like, um, maybe there's going to be some changes in this, like how that management structure runs in terms of um, maybe in terms of like scheduling of games or, you know, in terms of how they're managed in terms of how long they take to produce or just what, what team I mean, uh, they're working on. Yeah. I believe Kim Kimishima is staying on as like an advisory role, right? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Board. So that's, 
I think we're still in good hands. I think you know he, he, chemistry was obviously going to still see, see things right. Um, I don't expect to see too many changes too soon, but I think uh, over time we'll, yeah, as to do like release dates and stuff, and, or just development structure as a whole. You know, yeah, yeah, development I, ethos. Oh no, I know, and I feel like though this is. Like I said, they're going younger within this company. They 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 want there's set plenty of fresh faces here who want to actually do create new things within the company, but also create new ideas with the IPs that they have. I mean, yeah. it's um. I mean, bless God bless Shigeru Miyamoto for everything he's done for right now. But don't you kind of feel like at this point that obviously he's um you know when since he's been moving away from his roles and it's kind of a bit of evident when you saw Mario Odyssey where you definitely see some ideas where you feel like Miyamoto probably wouldn't have done. I feel like, you know, such things like, oh, have realistic proportion humans next to Mario. You can't do that. Or things you can't, like, these are small things. It just, yeah. I feel like this is with them, the company just feeling like, hey, you know, when you have Miyamo the project, you have these younger people who come in and are like, hey, we have this idea for whatever, but it always gets shot down, it seems like. I mean, I'm not 100% sane about this is what is going on. It just, um, it's, it, it seems like the more realistic option onto there. I mean, it just, they, the, the Nintendo realize they need to get younger here and, you know, and just infuse better for like better health for this company yeah. and um i uh but the only thing with for a call i could probably say is that it'll take a while to get some memes related to him because once because <laughs> he mentioned came into the memes were worth it so um uh, they will find a way memes will always find a way memes will <laughs> always find a way guys. <laughs> you know, um one thing i did find about for though his dad's actually a famous animator oh this yeah yeah um if i'm reading on here uh he what was it? 1980s Speed, not 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 the one with Keanu Reeves uh, in ni- the oh, 90s. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. it's, that, that's just. But he he was been known to create like acclaimed like short films and such. Um, oh, nice. okay. So uh, yeah, that, that that's like one thing to it. Um, so I thought you were going to finish that saying Speed Racer. Speed Racer. No, it's like Speed. speed. <laughs> not that. No. So <laughs> it'd be interesting if he um, makes an appearance in like Nintendo Directs and stuff, or if he, he's going to leave that to you know. Go uh, Koizumi. Um, no, I uh, I did read though. Um, well, you, you, I, I believe uh, Kimishima did run NOA for a short period of time after uh, Arakawa le- like uh, retired or really mm-hmm. uh, left. I forget. He um, so people within the company said he was a really great leader from coming up there, and that um, I, I assume like I guess is he what he, he was very. I assume he's fluent in English. I'm not sure, but um, uh. Uh, but what we have here right now, um, I've heard mixed messages on that, but I assume he's fairly good at English at least, uh, but he worked in Europe. Um, so, so that to, so. yeah. And he also worked on the, he was, he, and he also helped out the Pokemon company as well. Um, for Akawa, for my, he's very fluent in, uh, fluent in English. And, um, does that mean probably will be seen more with him in direct? Not because he speaks English, because it's a uh, Koizumi is able to get on there because he's such an energetic face and things yeah. we saw him during the first presentation. And I feel like Kimishima was like one of those people. He's like, I'm not doing this stuff. Yeah. Like he, he's not that type of person to be energetic, whatever, or like a Reggie or Koizumi or he's even. Like, I'm not a business. I don't appear on screen. I, I yeah, I'm a businessman first. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Shibata from from NOE was able like he's been always in your direct. So. <laughs> no, no, he, he he's yeah. wonderful too. Mm-hmm. Yes, we, we guess mm-hmm. we should we should pivot to that news then. We should do. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll so um, the Nintendo of Europe. Um, I'm not sure what the official title was. Is it? I guess pre- president. We yeah, yeah. Exa- Nintendo executive. executive here. Um, uh, Shatura Sabata um, is stepping down. Mm. Um, head of NOE. Um, and so, but. Well, I say stepping down. He's being promoted to senior executive officer, uh, but at in, um, Nintendo of Japan, or just Nintendo, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we don't have a replacement yet. Uh, so we'll have, an, in theory, we'll have a different face. Maybe we won't get a different face um, in terms of uh, direction. I'm going to miss, miss seeing him in our direct, so he, he, he came across somewhat shy, but also... Mm. He had a real wacky start, like when he started doing like the okay watch dance. It was, like, <laughs> it was like, like what what am I watching right now? There were a lot of bits, weren't there? Um I wonder <laughs> if um we will have a uh like another Japanese person mm. running an interview of Europe or we'll have a European person or It's a little bit harder in so... Europe because there's so many countries to represent. I think that's why I went with a Japanese person eventually. Um 
Yeah, I, I, either or. I mean, it really, it's down to me, like, it'll do a good job. Oh, of course, yeah. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I was just curious, like, um, if we will see, you know, that continue or, or if things will shake up in that sense. Be intriguing. Yeah. Um, and um, so uh, Takashi, Tezuka, and uh, Yush- uh, Yushiaki Kuzumi mm-hmm. um, will serve new rules of Nintendo. Um, they will be n- both named uh, board um, of ex- executive officers. Right. So getting a little bit younger there too as well. So. <laughs> Nintendo is young again. <laughs> relatively. No, um, relatively on there. Yeah. But again, it's... um. Uh, but again, best of luck to uh, Furukawa and everybody else in these uh, positions right now because it's um, obviously he's coming into a point where Dino is thankfully in a healthier spot. Mm. Oh, you definitely, and this is this is the time you would do this sort of switch up, as it were, because like if it was a time not too long ago when you know Nintendo future didn't look particularly great, at least in you know, the short term. Um, you see, like big moves like this, and it just—I think would just kind of make you more nervous. <laughs> like <laughs> the, the people don't really know what they're doing, but because it comes in a time of strength, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't think people really question it in that way. Is that all right? It, it's like, hey, oh, we can take, take take down the details. That's exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Opposed to writing articles of ah, everything's on fire or <laughs> <laughs> everything's on. <laughs> uh, well, I, I reckon we'll get. We would have had similar things if this came like before the announcement of the Switch, and we had these same like uh, changes going happening at Nintendo. Mm. Um, but yeah, that makes all the difference, apparently. But yeah, I wonder when we will see like actual changes happening. I mean, I don't, I don't think there will be a clear point, but um, changes cause... changes within the games that we play, or changes within the environment, because I think we've already seen that within you know, how they've been developing games and how they've combined both their handheld and their console divisions just to kind of free everybody up a little bit more. I mean, we're seeing that now, especially with the amount of games we're getting released from a first-party output. And we still don't even know what's going to be on this summer aside from Smash Brothers. Right, yeah. Exactly, Mm. but obviously these things have already been been put in motion. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the things we'll see, like, at E3, with, you know, obviously things which were clearly decided and had been worked on before this happened. And probably into next E3. Uh, and so I wonder if it won't be like till maybe even like the next generation, we'll probably see things like see things sooner happening like in the smartphone space. Mm-hmm. Like if we see shakeups there, we'll be oh maybe it's because of um, you know different um, decision making at, at top. But yeah, it's always a way like I think a lot of people look at this and go and expect like immediately everything from this point onwards was like the brainchild of X. No, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. But, um, we shall see. Uh, but yeah, I, I reckon, uh, and some of this we'll cover soon. Yeah, I reckon we'll see the more shake up on the mobile side. I don't reckon we'll notice much uh, from the trajectory of like what's happening with Switch and everything around that. Hmm. Maybe we'll see. Uh, we'll see. All right. All right. We've got some um, details then um, coming out of the earnings report. Uh, so, starting with the highlights. Uh, we got Nintendo recording shipments to retail of 15.05 million Switches for the Ooh. fiscal year. Mm, that, um, that'd be a lot of numbers right there. Totaling 17.79 million shipped mm. to date. Um, on the 3DS side, we've got uh, 6.4 million uh, shipped, um, totaling up now to 72.53 million for the 3DS. Mm. Uh, Amiibos. Um, Amiibo sold 10.3 million. Uh, f- figures, uh, which is kind of what I assume when I hear Amiibo, but also 5.8 million cards. Wait, they still put out the cards? Exactly. That was my first thought. <laughs> <walk. laughs> I assume like almost exclusively in Japan they came from. Um, and 5.28 million Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom mini uh, consoles. That's, that's not, not bad. bad. All. Over 5 million mm-hmm. of the things. No, that's good. I mean, knowing that the <laughs> shortage... I mean, well, not Game Buster. Well, it's, it's still good because you had the... It seemed like the PR disaster of everything coming like, oh, will people be able to get a hold of this? And now it's like, I see at least one or two in a store occasionally. Yeah. And they'll be gone. And then they'll be like, oh, it's a healthy little restock once. It just... It's not like it's there for a second. Oh, and you blink and miss it. So that's 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 good. And I'm curious how it's going to be when the uh, NES uh, Classic gets re-released. Mm. Hmm. That's true, yeah. Got more classes to come, and yeah, I, I've 
No, I still see um, um, mini Super Nintendos around. So it seems like, you know, they are keeping up with stock, which is good. I, I see more Super Nintendo classics than I do the NES classic. I've, 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 I don't think I've even seen one NES classic, but I've seen, yeah, four or five Super Nintendo ones. Well, wait, wait, but, well that's the thing. It's just, uh, the, well, the NES was discontinued, though. They, I think they're getting ready to soon yeah. this summer roll out NES. I think I'm, that's what I'm confused uh, by. I, I would hope so. But um, I still need to get an SNES, an SNES classic at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. To my my choice match. I don't think I have seen a original NES classic in quite some time. Like since mm-hmm. the only, only, only time I see them is online, and then the bots get them. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, so moving on from mini consoles, uh, we've got back to Switch. Uh, so the forecast of Switch for next year, uh, Nintendo's planning to ship an uh, extra twenty million. Uh, switches and four million 3ds's. That's 20, interesting. 20 million. They're not that, gonna hit that. I no, here, now. They're not gonna hit that. Here's here's the thing when we point out though, from la- this time last year when they were discussing that they moved up their um like that the, they wanted to sell up to like what was it like fifteen million switches by this fiscal year and um they obviously surpassed that. And one thing we I kind of discussed about it was uh is Nintendo kind of lowballing their number here with this one. Now you have to realize what what's going to be happening within this time frame is that we, I mean, we you can't underestimate Smash Brothers. Obviously, that, that's one thing that comes if, to it. Also, also if, this, also if, if Smash Bros. makes it this year, you really think they're going to it, miss it, a window? No, I'm, not, because... I'm not. I'm not going to say it's not, but I'm saying there's always the potential for delays. There are, but it's like you have to kind of consider right now what else would they have that fall? That's the exactly, thing. Exactly. Yeah. Which is, so, why, this is the, why I'm saying they're not going to hit 20 minutes. Well, the, the games like that, it's a matter of a one-two punch like you had last year with Odyssey mm-hmm. and, of course, Breath of the Wild that hit yeah. out of there. I'm yep. saying here that's a very audacious, audacious number. Can it possibly be done? Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we people have underestimated the Switch time they, and time again. They have, but to reach 20 million, you would need the likes of Pokemon. On the That's the thing. I don't think we'll see that this year, but I think oh. we may see something Pokemon related. True, but if we're talking fifth school year, I, I reckon that helps. Does it? it, it I think it's reckon... in March. I don't think we're going to see Pokemon in a year's time. I reckon we uh, could see. I reckon we could see like a February Pokemon. I don't think it's out there uh, as possible in like an early March. No, that, 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 that's, that's, I, yeah, I don't. I don't think traditionally Pokemon's not. It's not like married to like holiday season. No, sometimes they really be out. But I mean, generally they put it towards the end of the year. So, oh, well, we've had we've had Pokemon games released on handhelds in spring though. That's true. No, I mean, but it, it's a no. I can understand people can kind of go off at the whole number. Like, man, how are they gonna? What, what do they have? It, no, because when they say we're going to sell twenty million, and that gets you thinking, what are they going to have to do that? Because obviously, there's Smash Brothers. That's going to help. Mario Kart Eight continues to sell almost right like a deluxe right now at a clip that's almost like I'm not saying GTA Five numbers, but basically almost their version of it, where it's like, wow, this is still kind of in the top tens each month. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I think it re-entered the UK sales charts well, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, games very rarely re-enter charts. That's not usually how it works. Um, but yeah, I guess in short, it just means that Nintendo is fairly confident that they are going to have something at least, and you would assume that would be a you know a, an attractive software library um, launching within that time frame. Uh, maybe they've got some other weird experiments like Labo, just waiting to announce. <sighs> I mean, it's possible they might come out with like whatever, like they would believe like that next Wii Sports thing is, and just like spring it on us and go, "Yep, yeah, we we know we got this." Like in yeah, the bank, they're, they're we gambles, know people get mad over it. They're still gambles. They're still hit. They they're hit and misses. I. Colin's not you... impressed. He's, he's not. He's not. He's... What was it going to be, Colin? Go on then. If it's not twenty million, it's going to be recorded to history. They did yeah. fifteen this year, right? Yeah. So well, I'm gonna, they, they I think I, I think that's going to dip slightly. I think we're going to hit around twelve. Twelve mil. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I will. We, we, you've heard it here first. We'll be okay. Twelve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say twenty-one. I'm gonna say <laughs> twenty. Why would you go twenty-one? You want the over? Um, I like the number. 
I, I think it is. It's, oh, it's 21 is like drinking age. What? <laughs> Not over there, obviously. But no, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say hit 20. I really do. I mean, I mean, it's just me playing safe on there. I really do feel like what it, 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 it's healthy club it's selling right now, and I feel like Smash Brothers is gonna con- contribute more to that. And who knows? And I, 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 as far as a game, I feel like that we will see this year. Who knows? Maybe we'll see whatever intelligent systems cooking up for the next Fire Emblem. That could also help. Not not as much well, as what they not, they they said it it's scheduled. So unless it's delayed, it should come out this year. Yeah, but yeah. See, there's, there's too many what ifs for twenty million this year. I yeah. And we've already had a lot of Fire Emblem. I know. <laughs> there's three of yeah. them. There's three of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fire, it's <laughs> called Fire Emblem <laughs> If in um, Japan. Japan. Yeah. 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 Mm. But so, so Colin thinks 12 million 3DSs, or no, not 3DSs, but 12 million Switches are going to be sold the physical year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shipped. Absolutely. Shipped. Okay. We said shipped. All right. That is, that is shipped. Yes. Yes. Not sold. Yeah. 12 million. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go from impress, like um, predictive impressive numbers to actual impressive numbers then. Uh, we've got. <laughs> 10 million copies sold for Super Mario Odyssey. Yay. And that Yay. does include uh, some bundled versions, I believe. I, I don't have any details. I've just got 10 million for Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> you just got 10 million. You just, I got, you just... I've got a number, and that's all I've got. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a, that's a no shock there. It's a surprise. No, I mean, no shock there, obviously. So, I mean, just... Um... Yeah, I mean, assuming because it's from Nintendo, you'd imagine this is all-encompassing. So it would cover, you know, physical, digital, any sort of bundles, because they've got all those numbers. So yeah. it, this is them trying to put themselves in the best light. So I'd imagine they would put them all together. Has first. it sold more than Sunshine? Sunshine's only less than ten million. If I can make that up. Why, why do you jump straight to Sunshine? Because Sunshine's the best one. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. Sunshine. <laughs> it definitely did not sell ten million because then they would have made obviously a sequel to that. Um, it only sold da, 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 like six million copies. Really? And it's, yeah, six million that's copies. That, that's the mm. well, for Mario it's fine, but obviously it's not not newer. Say like, yeah, it's, oh, it's not Odyssey numbers. Well, it's not, yeah, the obviously not Odyssey numbers. <laughs> no, I don't know. So, um, right. No, what, are, what, what else has sold well? Well, um, Breath of the World, believe it or not, that also sold pretty well. Um, so well, in fact, it's now the best-selling Zelda game of all time. With really? Almost. Mm. Yeah. Almost mm. 10 million copies sold, uh, which is 8.48 million for the Switch version, and between 1.5 and 2.18 on Wii U. Mm. I remember somebody was, uh, I've read on Nintendo Life, they said something about how is, uh, like, Breath of the Wild is now the best-selling uh, Zelda game of all time. Kinda. And I was like, what's with the kinda? And I read on there, and I was a little, like, they were combining the sales from, I think... Uh, they looked at Ocar- Ocar- before that Ocarina of Time. It was like Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess. I think were the. Uh, it's one of the two, I believe, on there were, were the best. Like, but no, I, when they mentioned about Ocarina of Time, they were combining the 3DS sales with it. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I would say Twilight Princess would have been right up there as one of the best selling, mainly because of the marketing behind it. Marketing and also, we launch title very helps. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. No, it's um no, but like as far as um like because when the Legends of Zelda first released, it was one of the first few games out there to actually you know break the one million sales mark, I believe, in the United States, I think. And um, now if we're looking at Ocarina of Time, uh, yeah, according to here, it's saying it's yeah, this is when them combining sales like thirteen million or something. Like again, don't quote me so much on that. Um, okay. and Twilight Princess was like a nine point two two million, and that's um. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, right here. That's actually including. I'm reading right now. Yeah, this is including uh, both um, 3DS and N64 sales. Ocarina of Time sold 7.6 million. Legend of uh, Ocarina of Time 3D 5.62 million. And yeah, that's them combining that there, which is two different versions of the game. I, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's still the same yeah. game. Yeah. It's still the same game, but it's just a different coat of paint. I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree that this is essentially the same different game with just little textural differences and, you know, performance issues, like different performance uh, changes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. 
And, and let's cover the last of the uh, the heavy hitters. We have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, is now also the uh, the Wii U version in under a year. <laughs> wow. Um, and being, you know, it is, you know, the same game with a few ex- bells, extra bells and whistles. It, 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 it's, it's pretty much the same game, yeah. But, yeah, well, it's... Um, much the same streamlined. Original. Yeah. I'm, and, just, yeah. I, I'm not terribly surprised at that. Mm-hmm. It's Mario Kart, yeah. yeah it's Mario Kart. It, it was the one game which sold well on the Wii U, though. <laughs> Well, it was the be- yeah, it was it was the best selling Wii U. Game. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mario Kart. It is always going to sell. Absolutely. Mm. It's no Double Dash though. Oh yeah, Double Dash is pretty good. Never Maybe happy. Never, never happy. Stuck in the past. Never happy. Oh, Double Dash was awesome. Yeah. Oh, well. I was like, no, you move on to the next headline. Um, mm-hmm. So, during the financial briefing, Gimishima stated that they have plans to support 3DS beyond this year. Um, which before, we, we, but, but before we get there, I wanted to say something about oh, the sales, uh, yeah, sales oh, number that we did not cover is that um, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles is now at a 1.31 million copies sold. So, it's Ooh. technically, I mean, before we mentioned before, it's now the best selling, and there's still a best selling game in that series. So, as niche as it can be, that's, a, that's good for something like that. Ooh. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, yay. And, and and just to help you out in your corner, Con, um, Mike on the chat, Double Dash is the best Mario Kart game and deserves an online remake. Thank you, Mike. See? I wouldn't See? mind that. I not, wouldn't al- mind. Al- not alone. I'm not, oh, no, it, 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 it's the best one. It's the only Mario Kart that has a cooperative element. No one's disputing that. I'm. I'm agree. I'm agreeing. I, if somebody says da- double that's dash, why, double. that's why it's so good, and it's still. Oh, I, I didn't realize you were so up on the co-op there, Colin. What double dash? Hell that's, yeah! That's, oh, just in, just in general, like that was your lead argument of why it's the best Mario Kart. It has the best co-op. <laughs> yeah. No, I've had, no. I, my, my my beef is with people, and I know people like Mario Kart sixty four. It's, it's they view it through so much and roast into glasses. <laughs> but here's the thing: it's my least. It's not my. It's it's. Probably, I'm not a big fan of Mario Kart Wii, but it's probably up there as not my favorite Mario Kart game. I, like I, Mario I, Kart I, game. I, I, know, I never played Mario Kart 64, so I can't really comment mm. on that. So, yeah. There we go. But anyway, what were we about to say, Carl? Uh, Lewis? <laughs> um, that, about 3DS support. Uh, oh, and how it's yeah. going to extend beyond uh, what we're <laughs> expecting, uh, which is kind of what we knew, really. Um, we, we knew, well, yes yeah. and no. We, we knew that the uh, the remake for Mario and Luigi um, Bowser's Inside Story is coming out in 2019. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Um, but the wording here says the 3DS is getting support for 2019 and beyond. Um, <sighs> Which is saying. <laughs> so they're, they're committing to at least 2020. It makes my heart sink a little bit. Just a little bit. Why does it make uh, your heart I mean, okay. Is the fact that its existence, its mere existence, still right now is like is putting off for like oh Nintendo should be up making something better or I, I feel like there there could have been the new 3ds was fine it was good what it was but it's me that was like I would also put it on life support because that, that's like Sega Mega Drive territory but I, I feel like it was just kind of like buoying the 3ds like okay we're gonna get a few more years out of this. Isn't it about time? Like, okay, the ds is done. We're going to move on to something else. And usually, when you have something in the pipeline, when you find something like that, it's a matter of like time and place to what they can do. And for something like this, it's like people are saying, like, "Oh, switches out. Maybe we can pull the plug in the 3ds." It's no, I wouldn't say that because they're two different markets. No, they're, yeah, it's like you, when you have something that's still selling exactly. well until until you see significant dips, then you're going to see that. I mean, when they said beyond 2019, that's what surprised me. That's yeah. really the only thing. It's not that I'm. I, I'm just curious what they have in store to actually kind of keep this thing kind of going strong because yeah. it's it's fascinating. I mean, for the rough start that this handheld have and just to see it still kind of chug along as it is right now is uh, still an accomplishment. It's remarkable. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like there's a, it should be a certain, like, a maximum life a system should have before they go, okay, we need to move on to something else. I don't know. It, it's... It's seven years old already. True. I mean, I can see. I mean, it's because I think we find because we find ourselves in like this new kind of Nintendo scenario where like they're new main Nintendo. Co- they should write out all the logos. They already did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, 
on all, all the variations. But because we have a home system, which is also a portable, yeah. um, but it is a lot more expensive than any of their portables have been. Um, I think they were either going to ride out the 3DS for a lot longer than it would have originally planned to have been, yeah. or to replace it with something newer than something with the word new on it. Um, and I think they're taking that first option, right. which is I think they're going to tr- support the 3DS for as long as um, sure. until they can get the Switch to a you know a close enough price to a 3DS or some variation of it, and until they That's a drop. Long way away though. True, but I think they. Even if they only put out like a couple of games of the 3DS a year, as long as they can repackage the old stuff, keep it fresh, keep keep it on the shelves. Most importantly, and that keep that um, area um, covered for them. Still, um, yeah. I think that's what this kind of life support plan is for it. And uh, the other thing is that it also encourages third parties to keep supporting it, um, because especially if Nintendo still has systems out, um, they've got a growing fan base still. Um, and they're not making a huge amount of games for it themselves, then it's you know a good market for third parties to jump in for you know a a reasonable size budget um, for uh, you know a 3ds game compared to like a Switch game or you know a high you know HD game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I, I just yeah, it's still a good like know. system to buy for a, a kid or you know your your child sort of thing. True, I, I just feel like maybe it's about time we had the HDS. Well, that'd be cool. you know, that's, that's I, a switch essentially, though. Well, it's yeah, got one two screen. strings, though. It's no, but <laughs> that's the cool. resolution is still higher. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is that, but I mean, it's I, it's, it's it'll be interesting. Like, I'm wondering what they're gonna do. And again, this is just something like okay, like I think Lewis was kind of piggybacking off there. They want to get to a point where not necessarily price, but where I mean, Switch is selling still well, so well, but it's like they want to get to a point where. They're able to take, I won't say a risk, but able to transition to what their next handheld is. Who knows? Even if there is another handheld that they do. Mm. And I'm not saying like, that could be guaranteed, but who knows? Huh. Yeah, that'd be the, 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 the. I feel like we're. Yeah, that's an interesting situation. When does a handheld become not needed anymore? Yeah, uh, ironically, I reckon it is when they simply can make a, a switch okay. cheap enough. Well, I'll think about and and so this will then have it may it may not be the next generation jump, but we'll have the, the equivalent of the pro by then. Yeah. Um, and at that point, hopefully, they can make the switch a bit cheaper, whatever means, whether it's making it a bit smaller or just making it like so the Joy Cons don't detach, or you know they'll find a way and they'll hit that sweet price point, and then mm-hmm. they can wave goodbye to the 3ds because then they'll have their you know their different their their price range there for. Um, buying it for kids or for ad- adults buying it for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So we've also got um we've got an an update of sorts on the tennis online service. <laughs> Which is basically we're gonna hear more. It will May. exist at some point in the future. But it is early May. Yeah, yeah. So some point soon basically. So basically maybe either tomorrow or early next week. Who knows? <laughs> um like um, so, so is everybody kind of just dealing to a point which the price point here is very nice at what they're going to offer, but we feel like it's going to be the price point, yeah, that's what we're going to get. So mm-hmm. I know everybody's going to be hoping, hoping that there's some form of cloud save storage portion that comes to this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, out of that, that's not going to happen. I reckon it will be cloud saves. You think? I... Just point... uh, ironically, I think it's an easy... It's a quick fix for them. It's a quick win. Uh, yeah, I, I something. Think, I don't see it's much lot. easier than implementing yeah, like fun. universal live chat throughout all their games. <laughs> well, that's that's never going to happen. They won't accept. They won't exactly. Happen. But wait, you're saying they won't accept? Wait, you're saying that you're saying they won't accept? You're saying they won't accept that basically because I I know knowing the stupid decisions that Nintendo has done in the past year and a lot of the good they've done, they know they hear the complaints of people when they ship when they ship their switches in and realize, hey, I'm losing my data data here right now, and I don't want it to basically. Be on egg, like walk on eggshells when I realize, oh, sending my switch in. Mm-hmm. They know they're hearing these people. They they, mm-hmm. they 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 know they do this, and they realize the point it, that they have the things. They they have something here where they have to actually just correct because it's a quality of life. Th- it's a quality of life thing that everything should have. That's yeah. the only thing I really want out of it. Yeah. And everybody everybody's always complain about. Oh, I want achievements, trophies. Oh, I want Netflix. Those are the bottom of the barrel of things I want. I could absolutely. Care. I could care. 
say cloud storage here is something that is very important. Yeah. Now, does uh. it mean we probably will get this in this portion in early May? Probably not, because I'm just oh. setting myself a disappointment. Do I feel like that we're going to get cloud storage, essentially? Nope. Yes. I really do <laughs> believe we're going to get it. It's... And what is the reasoning why you believe that's not going to happen? I mean, it may not be here. <laughs> it's I'm putting you on the spot. It's Nintendo. We, I know we, it's Nintendo. We will get some bizarre features first that we didn't never ask for, but they're like, oh, you can now sync it with me, Tomo, which for some reason, you know, like, okay, great. The team was um, going to be dead, though, in It May. doesn't matter. Nintendo will do it. Um, Jeez. But yeah, it, we'll, we'll, we'll get there were some interesting saying. updates there, but I'll let you carry on for now. <laughs> Go ahead, let's go ahead. Let's go. All right, um, now you're going to be able to edit your me uh, from a web browser, oh, um, and so, there's yeah. some weird like new export from me Tomo to it, but it doesn't actually include any of the costumes or anything. So I'm not sure what the purpose of it What's is. The point? Uh, <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I thought you would enjoy that. There we go. Who the no. hell made that choice? Huh? And also, I, who, who who needs to update their me? <laughs> Why are me still a thing? As on, like outside of They're the system. Harmless. Oh sure, yeah, but yeah, but no. That's a weird priority, that one. But, <laughs> yes. The people are demanding that they can change their me's on their smartphones. <laughs> uh, well, I do think that realistically going through this one, I know we're gonna I feel like we're gonna get maybe in terms of I feel like the virtual console name is no longer going to be used anymore, obviously, and we're going to get you know, aside from like, oh, here's these games like once a month that you're going to classic games to play online. So like mm -hmm. everybody's able to play it and, you know, months go down the line and you're, you know, you're playing the game and nobody else is. So uh, I feel like we're going to get a Netflix style type of service for this where it's like, hey, you pay 20 bucks a year. You, 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 you will get this access of these rolling, continuing like games that you can play each month. Like, for instance, yeah. like, hey, here's Super Metroid. And here's these that you can play for these month, whatever. And then it just kind of rolls over. Okay, I really do feel like that's kind of be. I feel like that's going to be something what's going to drive the service here. There's going to be I, something weird about it. It's going to be a weird. It's going to be a, a, an odd idea surrounding that. With Nintendo, well, but yeah, no, I'll be happy with the Netflix style. And kind of like you know, you pay. I would say like, like thirty bucks a year or whatever it's going to be, and it's like you know, you get a selection of games. You can just you don't download them. Well, I guess you could download it, but if you catch a subscription, you can't play them anymore. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. That'd be cool. No, no, yeah, and it's um, I well, what they had to do with the service though is aside from a great price point, the people get in there, they had to have give more incentive for people. You know, you, you've got Smash Brothers coming out, uh, like coming out, and then you have Splatoon too, which is still gonna be with its rolling out content. Which I feel like there's gonna be more and more players who still want to be on there. I mean, yeah. more so than arms. So you have to intensi incentivize them to say like, hey, it's not just you know, here's twenty bucks here to for a year. You want to make sure people are able, like, oh, I'm not going to do this. I mean, yes, I know the price point itself is going to be something where it's like that's an easy sell, twenty bucks a year. I, I do find it kind of ridiculous for you to pay to play online. I would mm. well, it's it. it's it's hey, it's it, it's modern gaming, folks. Hey, it's it's that's systems that Sony and PS. I understand the 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 crux of it, but you know. When you have companies like either like Sony and such, whatever that actually implement that, it's so yeah. is um, so. Yeah, but true. um, yeah. All right, there you go. I think that covers that one. Let's jump into Nintendo's plans for E3. So one thing after another. So wow. they're going to do another video presentation. I don't think any <gasps> surprises there. No. Uh, but it's dated uh, June 12th, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. Um, and the presentation will be focused on Switch games releasing in 2018. Hmm. Um, and then similar to how the last few years have ran, um, following that will be uh, the Treehouse Live presentation, uh, which, um, like last year, will run for the three days. Um, and that's going to show off... Um, you know, games which have been on the on the uh, the video announcement and some other bits as well. But in addition to that, uh, there's going to be a Splatoon 2 tournament mm -hmm. uh, on Monday, uh, June 11th, and also on the same evening, I believe, um, there's going to be a Super Smash Bros. Invitational tournament. The final, the finals of the Splatoon tournament, I think, are on the same day as that one. I think I was trying to get... Ah, uh, that would be it. 
We've got the finals of Splatoon 2 and the, the full invitational for Smash Bros. afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Expected. So expected. What, what, do we, what do we think of the pitch? Expected? Expected. I mean, they've been doing this for so long right now with like video presentations. It's... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know what to decipher between games in 2018. I mean, we could still easily get pitches and stuff like that, or who knows? There's always going to be directs afterwards that are going to focus on things beyond, or even like a game reveal, like a, um, the, uh, for instance, at the uh, like the game awards. Also, mm. to, to, to always on the lookout for like during the um, like during the, the the Treehouse presentations. That's how we got Metroid <laughs> Metroid Prime, uh, or not Metroid Prime, but uh, Metroid Samus Returns shown on there. That was unveiled via Treehouse dialogue uh, yep. live stream. So. There's that, and um, I don't know. It seems like every year when we get to it, people are like, why won't they go back to a live presentation, whatever. It's like, you're, you're still money. getting... <laughs> That's why it costs a lot of money to run a live presentation. And not only that, you get... It's, money, same... it's, it's money and it's scripted. It's scripted. You, 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 get, you, get, you get the same information with less botches in terms of delivery. So... Do you want another DJ Ravi drums? That's all I'm asking. <laughs> that, that, that's how it, it, that guy was amazing. <laughs> God, I, I can't I believe kinda I, want, I, I kind of want to say yes to that. <laughs> Very yeah. No, it's expected. This is this is expected, and it's going to be a busy, busy, busy uh, E three. <laughs> yeah, I think what is pretty cool out of this, although it is somewhat expected, is the Invitational for Smash Bros for Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because assuming this is you know fully new, then mm-hmm. this is going to be a very good opportunity just to get a lot more uh, information on that game. Like new characters, um, yeah, but also just getting into kind of the minutia of like how, like, if we see a character in the trailer, um, and then that character is being played in this tournament, all right, all right, now we know all its moves, now we kind of get a good feel of it. Um, whereas before, it's kind of a lot more is left to the imagination. Is that all right? Yeah. We'll have to wait, wait to actually someone gets their hands on it to figure out what this character is going to play like beyond like these couple of moves they showed off, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's a proper opportunity to it. So, hmm. so yeah, I guess a, um, like the the real question here is, do we think like Smash Bros is going to steal the show, or is oh, it a game which they've yet to either yet to announce, um, or something which they've got announced but they've not really shown off? Like Fire Emblem will be like announced and shown off, mm-hmm. which they're going to try and push either at, like as much as Smash Bros or even more so. So you're saying, well. No, you're saying like do a whole like booth Disneyland esque kind of like thing what they do with Mario Odyssey and um, Breath of the Wild. Maybe Fortnite. not specifically like just that, but in terms of like um, trying to get like eyes on the thing, do you reckon it's gonna be something as big as Smash from Nintendo? Um, uh, that's a tough bet. one. Um, I think we'll get footage and stuff of like or an update on the Pokemon RPG. But, like, hey, here's maybe yeah, there's, be there's, there's some updates and. Or something more on Metroid Prime Four, which I guarantee it's 2019. That game, I will be <laughs> shocked. I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked if they say like, "Hey, it's ready." I'm like, "No, no, no it's way. not." No. no. Um. Yeah, no. Metroid is a long shot. I mean, there's a chance, but not likely. Uh, Pokemon. We won't. We'll probably get like a fancy trailer for it, but I think it will still say 2019 at the end true. of it. Oh, true. But that could almost be enough because even if it's like, oh, Smash comes out in a couple months and Pokemon comes out you know, summer next year, yeah, but, like but they do a big blur out of like, this is what it looks like. These are, um, and like, <sighs> Oh, you know, Oh, it is, you know, a much more open experience than what you're used to. That could still the show. In my opinion. If it is radically different, mm. then yes, absolutely. That will be huge. Um, yeah, I just, as long as like the digital presentation they have is fairly long in length, I'll be quiet. I, I don't reckon it will be. I reckon it's going to be short and to the point either way. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be like... We'll see. 20, <laughs> 20 minutes. Oh, well, 20. Um, they'll spend 15 minutes of those on like one game. They always do that. Um, but has it been confirmed that they, it, the sole focus is on Smash Brothers? No, no, it's not. Big. Oh. No, I think that's just like... Um, I'm just going with like that's the only real thing we've got like like firm details on, yeah, especially yeah. with also them doing the tournament at the same time. Yeah, I'm sure there'd be a, a nice surprise tucked away in there somewhere. Mm. At least I would hope so. Cool. Yeah. Is this kind of um? It's hard, hard to get a proper gauge here, but like genuinely kind of like positive vibes here going into the Nintendo Z3 at this point. I'm I'm personally I'm, I'm excited. I'm optimistic because um, 
uh, we really, I mean, I, I'm excited to see what we get more of that new Yoshi game. Mm-hmm. And what we see with like Smash Brothers. Again, they, they still have to sprinkle things out. And who knows? We got, like you said, with the 3DS still chugging along, who knows what they're going to put out for that too? Yeah, the very good yeah. point. What else can he oh, remaster? <laughs> Link's, I, a, a remake of Link's Awakening. It's, it, I, watch I it. Thought, uh, what, like a full 3D I remake? like that idea. What, a 3D New remake? Link's Awakening DX. No. <laughs> I would call, but only if it's still you still. Any of it's what still? Any of it's 2D, do you say? Yeah, mm. it was like, it has, it has to stay 2D. Oh, Oh yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, I, don't, I just, I don't, I just I don't, pictured it there in like the um, link between worlds art style. Ooh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> I mean, all they would have to do is change Link's model. That's right. I, I just think that would be that would look a bit odd, in my opinion. I'm not entirely mm-hmm. sure why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it needs to be uh, a little bit like you need to try almost the Wind Waker model in there. Ooh. It, it feels like quite e- 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 even then. That's a bit. That's different. Yeah, it, it does have a unique like vibe to it. It does. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think like but Wind Waker Link is much more closer to it. I feel than Breath of the Wild, not Breath of the Wild. Of the Wild. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's vastly different. True. Uh, but not, even then, I, I, I would I would take that up that more so than um, Link Between Worlds Link, mm, or just Link mm. the Fast Link, essentially. But it has a three D model. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be, um, uh, yeah, but E three, it's it's. I think overall, it's going to be very. It's going to be good. I'm fine I'm with good. Say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with good. I'm, I'm not. Good. I do not. Have, I never have my hopes up because something's always gonna let me down. Um, so same lofty heights as Odyssey. That's good to hear. <laughs> we can all get around that one. That's for sure. Why? Why? Why does that bother people so much? I don't. I'll never know. Most, mostly me in particular. I think, Colin. Why? It's a good game. Moving on. All right. Moving on. Uh, yes, so please. Move, move on. <laughs> move on. Move on, please. <laughs> Um, and this is actually our, our final piece of news for this evening. Um, and it's it's a new initiative, that's for sure. Uh, so Nintendo has partnered up, um, and I, I'll use that term loosely for now, I'll get into the details in a moment, um, with Psy Games, uh, who is the biggest, as long as I've got my facts together here, um, Japanese smartphone uh, publisher. Um yeah. And Nintendo has bought 5% of Psy Games. And they have announced that they will be releasing Dragalia Lost, uh, which is like an action RPG for smartphones. Uh, and it's a unique, it was a new IP. Uh, it is being developed by Psy Games, post <laughs> Nintendo. Um, and so it doesn't seem to have any sort of like Nintendo licensed property in it whatsoever. Um, nor does Nintendo really. It's, it seems currently have. It seems like they got like very little involvement. In it. it seems like they're just banking it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, but yeah, oh, I mean, there's a trailer out for it. Um, it the game's being formally announced as such. Um, and yeah, it's by Side Games, who make a lot of money. In I, I'm looking forward to this being huge in Japan and just being a moderate success everywhere else. Does this signal essentially that the there's trouble afoot with them and DNA? Apparently or... not. No, because um, part of this, um, Nintendo did uh, power out a statement that they are continuing uh, business as usual with uh, DNA um, and that they may also be looking in the future for additional partnerships. So it looks like they're just expanding more so than changing. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I think this is one where I feel like it's just... It's, this is, my from what I'm seeing here, it looks like they're just like funding projects, like hey. uh, it's funding investments. You know, that's it, currently this what it looks like. It might be, um, you know, this game was actually you know somewhat in development. That would make sense with the timing of it. And like the next game might be, you know, actual joint development between Nintendo and Psy Games. Mm-hmm. Um, so so you're saying it's a bit of a test run for them? Or yeah, it's like, it could just be like part of the deal. Like, okay, we'll sell you this, percent of the company, but hey, you got to help fund this game for us. I think, yeah, as, as like a buy I don't know. It, it's it's interesting. We'll see how it turns out. But yeah, I'm hoping they do more Nintendo-themed games, not just by random RPGs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's... Like, it's a tricky one, because I have seen the trailer, and like... 
I've not really played games like this um, on on smartphone. I've seen a lot of trailers for similar looking games. You know, this is the thing. This, is, this type of game is like uh, for me, it's just not suited to mobile. And yet, here, there it is on mobile. So, yeah, they're very popular, Colin. Aren't they yeah, they are. A lot of people are very happily playing them. I guess, yeah. I'm sure there are. <laughs> not, not they're, they're, so, so they're. So they're so they're not happy unless you're happy. Did you forget when I said they're the, the biggest? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean I, I'm sure in Japan it's huge. I just don't see it being yeah. successful. By fair enough. Okay, um, fair. I have to say, like, I, I'm surprised how well, um, and I don't know the actual numbers, but just going by hearsay and what I'm seeing uh, of uh, how Fire Emblem Heroes is doing over here in the West. Hmm. Uh, it, again, it might just be you know the, the circles of people that I mingle with, um, but I do see people continue to actually use it, which I wouldn't have expected to be the case. You know when it was originally announced. Yeah. Uh, so you never know, but yeah, I, I'm not sure if like um, maybe they do, maybe they do lean more on the Nintendo brand outside of Japan for this, and maybe that's part of the deal, um, as in like. Yep, Psy Games, they've got Japan down. And not that Nintendo doesn't, uh, but Psy Games, um, their weakness is outside of Japan, in theory, where Nintendo right. has a much, much more recognizable trust in them. Very much like, just like, very much like a publishing type deal. Like, hey, we'll, we'll help you spread your game around. That's what it seems like currently. Yeah. Just going by, like, you know, what is happening? Like, yeah, Sly Games are the developer. It doesn't use like Nintendo intellectual property. Mm. Um, Nintendo's put 5% into the company. Um, and this game will be coming out under their name, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like they're funding it. But, you know, it's not a bad thing. Like, it's keeping their resources working on other things. Um, it's potentially going to make a lot of money for them. We shall see. Mm -hmm. um, and it might be like, you know, that could be a very. Like it's not a very creative way, but it could be a very smart way of growing that smartphone business of theirs, which is just like funding the right projects and letting their developers keep developing Nintendo games. <laughs> not a terrible outcome. That's not the worst. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, anything to add? Has anyone seen the trailer uh, for Dragalia Lost? Nope. No. I uh no I, I, I saw in there a little bit. Um, but it's uh. Looks of what it is being presented as. So, um, no, but I think this kind of goes back when we were talking about uh, Furukawa, how he wanted to actually dip his toe, like, more initiative with, like, mobile games and doing, like, you know, um, like, uh, games as a service, it seems like. So it just, uh, this one does seem like, I, whether this is just coincidence coming here, this could be another first step for them kind of moving forward with this type of, like, uh, this, in, this initiative and in, this initiative and concept. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I think that does it then. I think we've got to the end of our Nintendo news. We newsed out. We've newsed out, and unless there's any news, news I've missed, we've out. can we can we confirm? Is there any more news? No, there's no any more news. There's none. There's, we have the only, hit the end of the news. The only other news is go, go. The only other news is go vote for Raphael on this week's Splatfest or no. battle it out. <laughs> See, the, the problem I'm going to have is I usually go with whatever team I think is going to have like the least votes and I've had a pretty good track record so far uh, so we shall see you're a Michelangelo guy then, are you? potentially depends <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll get my I'll, uh, I'll check the internet out before I make my vote get a, oh, you see, get a feel yeah. of what's going on Lewis is like the anti-bandwagon <laughs> whoever's oh, behind he jumps works. <laughs> uh, solid plan Mm -hmm. All right, then. So we didn't have a super topic for you guys this week, um, but we should next week. And I also have some other announcements. Yeah. Um, super topics first, though, if you would like to chuck us a super topic, um, it can be uh, anything in particular, really. Some of those things will be changed in the future, but any ideas, let us know. Um, jump over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Voice. Um, and you will find the latest Fred there, and you can simply post and uh, put in a suggestion. We have uh, some secret projects in the works, which will be unveiled soon. 
Uh, and because it's coming up to our third anniversary of Nintendo Voice Podcast. Hey, we're getting old. We are. Which is, uh, which is um, Almost May, 9th. May 9th. May 9th, May 9th, May 9th I believe. Yeah. One week away. Exactly. So if everything goes to plan, we're going to have a spectacular spectacular episode next week um either way there's going to be some cool announcements so um do keep an eye and an ear out for those um we've got some very talented people working on some cool things so do get cool. excited on that and um I, I think that's going to count for my my end of show plug as well but do the proper <laughs> ordering of things harrison how can fine folks of the internet get hold of you and is there anything else you've been up to uh, well, you can reach me at Twitter at H Milfeld, and uh, of course you can find my friend code on top of my profile now um, for my switch, of course. Now everything else I've just been working for uh, working through uh, like Pure Nintendo and I think I would be able to announce this to everybody else right here, but I will be attending E3 next month. Woo! So yes, I will be going there for two days. Uh, I'll be there with another staffer from Pure Nintendo or actually your editor in chief. Uh, I'll be flying up there, and I am both incredibly excited and incredibly nervous at the same time. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I just, <laughs> I, uh, it's going to be one of those things where I'm just like, like this, I would journalists or writers when they come over there, they say it's the best and worst week of your life. So, um, I'm ready for it. Go ahead, pal. It's going to be an experience. Mm -hmm. Something I've always wanted to go to since I was 14. So, yeah, it's going to be excited. Oh, cool, man. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. All right, Colin, before I pass it over to you, um, Mr. Mr. Cyan on the chat asks, um, uh, yeah. I'm not entirely sure the full context of this, but <laughs> just going by the last comment, uh, you added Detective Pikachu to Twist Diffusion to make Colin happy? Was, it, was that the case, Colin? Maybe. I think he's asking if you would. Um, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, if Nintendo finds out, they may not be too happy about it, though. No, but... But I doubt anyone would notice is the sad thing. <laughs> oh, you never know. They've got news anywhere, man. But I, I yeah, no, Detective Pikachu needs to like not exist. Just put him in one of the, the carrot slots. Not even a secret character or anything. Just see just, what happens. See if just stick him in the front. <laughs> just, like, just put him in the title screen. <laughs> nah, nah. Gotta be a little sneaky. Little sneaky. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me get my contact details. Right. So. Twitter is how you get hold of me at Highly and Bard. You can find me there. You can also uh, catch my streams. I stream every day uh, over on mixer.com slash Highly and Bard. There you are. Awesome. Mm. All right. For myself, if you want to get hold of me, the best places to Twitter. There's some other places you can find me on, but best places to Twitter. Um, the word you need either way, you can try other services, is Luvion. L E U V S I O N. Um, and that's what you need, really. Um, I've got nothing else to plug. I uh, look forward to a new wall next week, if you're <gasps> watching. Uh, if you're listening, um, my audio may sound ever so slightly different. It shouldn't say mic setup, but you never know. It might do. So you look forward to that. Uh, but more importantly, <laughs> look forward to the three-year anniversary celebration. School things in the works, wherever you're a listener, um, a watcher of the show, or is interact with us on Twitter as such. Um, there's some cool things happening. So... Get excited. And for now, uh, thanks again for watching. And this has been Nintendo Voice. Take care, everyone. See you later, guys. <laughs>